football players. Luca, in the USA gym, it's known because of being a random training type of environment because of learning, you know, increases in that type of environment. Have you dealt with situations where it's difficult for players to transition coming from a club that trains in a block scenario more than anything else? Oh, yeah. Or college teams? Oh, yeah. Oh, can you go and hit the ball from the box at me? I can work on my defense. I'm like, well, okay, I'll do it. But there's no transfer between what we're doing here, me hitting from the box and you actually digging the ball and reading the game and seeing the setter, seeing the set, you know, know the attacker and go dig the ball. So as you know, right now, we're not, we're robbing you of those opportunities. But if that's for your feel, for you to feel good, yeah, I'm going to spend 20 minutes at the end of the practice. I'm going to hit those balls at you. But that's not part of our practice plan. This is mm -hmm. all extra. And some players, they they need that because they spend eight months doing that and they believe I need that for comfort, for feel. And I'm like, okay, if you need that, I'll give you that. But that's not going to be part of our three three hour practice that we put together. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yes, that's definitely a challenge. But I would say our girls, they know we're here to get better. This is what coaches plan for us. Let's go after it. But every now and then, of course, and it makes sense, they would come with a request if we can do a little bit more blocked hmm. training, which we do super early in practice, but it's not absolutely or completely blocked. There's always some kind of serve pass set and then things happen. So when you work on serving, there's going to be always a passer. When you're working on passer passing, there's going to be always serve and most likely a, a catcher or a setter. If you're working on setting, there's going to be always a server and a passer. It's not going to be a coach tossing. Um, and then you're going to set maybe to a talk uh, to a target or maybe already somebody hitting the ball. That's kind of early. That's the most blocked we go early in practice. Mm. Play as much volleyball as you can. Stop wasting time on doing things that have nothing to do with volleyball or they transfer zero to the to the reality of the game. Mm -hmm. And we do that too much. When we're, block, when, uh, when we're practicing in a blocked environment, we get better very soon. We get better fast and we look good. But as soon as the ball, volleyball becomes random, suddenly there's a disaster. And now mm -hmm. we're shocked that this training doesn't work. So I would rather... I would ask every coach spend 80% or 85% of the time in very random environment. Everything you do, two versus two, three versus three, tutor session, attack school, whatever, as random as you can with a focus on one thing. Um, try to make as, as uh, the best you can volleyball-like environment. Um, and suddenly... Um, Things become simpler when you do that. But we're trying to come up with the magic drills. We're trying to come up with the magic stuff that, like I said, you get better fast and you look better fast because when somebody's hitting the ball at you from spot A to spot B, you know that ball's coming from the box to you all the time. But in the real life, you don't know that. Where the mm -hmm. ball's going, you don't know where the ball's going to go. There's going to be a block that's going to touch it. So it's, it's just play a lot of volleyball in a very random environment um, and just give it a try. Just give it a try. Uh, I know it's hard for some of us. It's really hard to give something away that we feel like it's making us great. But study the game. Try to understand motor learning. Try to understand human, um, uh, you know, how we learn, uh, how we um acquire skill try to learn that spend maybe one summer or one january when you're done with the season reading about stuff like that asking questions about like that because honestly you need five drills you need five drills in your in your in your library say you that again make, say that again you, so you don't you need a hundred drills no there's no drill that's going to make you great you can have a handful of drills that you can manipulate any way you want in terms of scoring maybe entering ball bonusing ball emphasizing different things uh, but make sure every rally starts with the serve and most of the rally should like every drill should start with the serve finish with the serve try not to get too involved as a coach creating too many opportunities that require player not to read not to adapt not to be challenged 
um, just give it a try. That's my thing. Like, give it a try and you'll see your team's going to go like this. The, the thing we're asking is to watch the environment and you have kind of four questions that you're constantly asking yourself. And that is, you know, is it uh, is it organized one uh, the way that I want it? Is it game like the way that I want it? Uh, does it offer enough repetition of situations? Not we're not talking touches situations. Um, and is it challenging? So challenging for everybody. So they're kind of like asking them to affect or to identify the challenge point. And then there's coaching. So design first, coaching last. And you know, to our to our previous point, uh, the introductory coach that may have some coaching experience, I think, is looking in that model and saying, well, "What's my role exactly?" Because it's more or less taken care of by the game. 